So I'm Elena and I would like to talk and actually I would like to really make this more like a discussion session uh, rather than me going through slides. I have some slides here, but just merely to kick off a discussion. So um, I think everyone probably in this room understands what the threat model change which we have with the confidential cloud computing. So we used to trust the VMM in the house, now we don't trust it anymore here. But what does it actually mean for the software stack running inside this protected guest? So we have these confidential cloud solutions now from the AMD, from Intel, maybe some vendors are coming, which, which have a way to protect the guest. We have a way to protect the memory, the registers, and so on. But the guest, is, it, guest software stack doesn't live in a vacuum. It needs to communicate with the host. It needs to communicate with VMM for various reasons. And, and, and it usually does it through either the um, parallel in, uh, interface or through the shared memory. And, and uh, it, it's like for parallel cases, it's like, you know, you can think that the guest still needs to do some MMIO reads, portio reads, that you need to read the PCI config space and so on. And, and of course the DMA is usually done, I think both MD and uh, Intel TDX, it's uh, done for the, uh, through the uh, shared memory regions. So we, we can think now of this guest kernel and guest, I'm going to focus more on the kernel, but uh, it, it's actually applicable to the whole stack you run, including virtual firmware, the bootloaders you have, anything you have in the software stack of the guest. So you can think of this now as, 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 as we are running inside this protected environment, but we have to still communicate out and we have to consume this input, which are now malicious. And this is not the attack surface we have envisioned before for the kernel. So we have for years, we have tried to secure the attack surface between the user space and the kernel. And we have created enormous amounts of mechanisms and, and ways and, and, and techniques for hardening that attack surface, including fuzzing, uh, many uh, extensions to compilers and so on. But now we have this new attack surface to think about. And, and, and as I said, that most of, for most of it, this attack surface is fully unhardened. So we have always used to trust what we get, the input we get from the drivers, the input we get from hardware, the input we get from breeding with PCI config space. These kind of things have always been trusted in our view, but now it's not anymore. And uh, just to indicate like how widespread this problem is. So I have made like quick check back in time in 5.11 kernel. So we had a lot of places where we would, even if we just focus on Paravirt.io, so all this MSR, Port.io, MMIO, and so on reads, we have a lot of location, code locations, which perform in the kernel, which perform these reads. I mean, they're not interested in writes because that just goes out into unprotected domain, but they're interested in the reads from the unprotected space because this is where we can consume the malicious input. So, um, and, and unsurprisingly, most of this code is actually in drivers. So we have a lot of drivers which do, you know, during the probe function and so on, they, they go read the PCI config space, they do set up the MMIO mappings and so on. So the, this talk is really, the goal of this talk is, is to kind of say that, okay, while everyone is currently in confidential computing, focusing in enabling the basic technology, so to make sure it's working, to make sure we have performance right, the attestation things are working, you know, disk is encrypted and protected. We also start to, we, we have to start thinking together, how do we actually address this problem? Because if we don't have this problem addressed, any easy, any of these bugs in the, let's say, device driver read, and, and we have, when we went through kind of hardening of our own kernel, we have found these bugs, I mean, in, in reality. So any of this bug can pretty much take down all the whole security. So you can use this bug, you can obtain some primitive read, write primitive in a kernel, and you can take over this protected VM, which you have spent so much effort and time kind of, you know, protecting using the hardware means and so on. And, and, and there are a lot of aspects to kind of talk about, and, I, and definitely I'm not going to have time to talk about them all, but I want to bring a couple of aspects which are probably the, are going to be the hardest to kind of to merge to upstream and the hardest to agree on. And that's why it's important that people start, that we start discussing this together, people start to raise that they feel, if we feel that this is needed, also for their use case, but you also start to raise this um, uh, on discussions. So, so as I said, the main problem, the main kind of share of this huge new attack surface lays in the drivers. And, and, and the good part of it, so if we would go and try to kind of, you know, harden all that attack surface, it's enormous effort. So we have even just inline kind of mainline drivers, we have a lot of them. 
and 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 it's not clear who's going to be doing that work but uh likely luckily we don't really need most of its drivers at all so we we what we need is a way to reliably disable these drivers from being so basically reliably disable that code from being run in protected guest because if the code is not run we don't have to worry how it behaves if malicious input is injected so and and for that uh while back we have been proposing uh to mailing list the concept of device filter so it's a basically a runtime filter which kicks in and say if you're running inside a protected guest, it can be unified for kind of any type of protected guest. And it, it has a small allow list of the drivers which, which are allowed to kind of actually execute. So and, and these drivers will be authorized and be able to run probe and from this interaction with untrusted VMM and the host. Um, this approach has has had so I think Greg has raised a number of issues how how this kind of the just technical approach has to be changed, and on our side Satya has been working to kind of address this technical feedback. Uh, there are a couple of still open, so I'm just mentioning here for completeness. But uh, things like which we still have to figure out how to do because like this allow list, even if we move it out of the kernel, the original patch is headed in the kernel, so we probably should and we will move it out of the kernel into an ERD. Uh, because there's a way also that you can protect an ERD and we can have at least where so that the kernel kind of code is clean from that. But um, there are a couple of smaller issues with uh, with uh, uh, with the uh, approach where we need to kind of make sure that we are not hard coding, we are not only hard coding in PCI ID numbers because there are some cases like this in VME, it actually can be whole class which we need to address and so on. So we're, I I'm sure we're like, we're, changes and technical kind of details that we can figure out together. But uh, the main pushback, which kind of conceptually we had from the mailing list was, okay, so can we just go from, for example, like just using some minimal kernel config for confidential computing? And it would be, in our understanding, it was not a very good approach for vendors. So that vendors don't want to have the, uh, you know, the minimal confidential cloud uh, computing kind of config, kernel config is hard to maintain. It's going to be specific to use case, but uh, I don't know what, what kind of, uh, I would like to kind of pose here and ask what kind of opinions people have on this approach. And do you see our alternatives here or anyone who wants to comment here? Um, so one of the things that we have in the cloud is we're not really sure that the threat model from the host into the guest is a real one that we need to worry about because if an external entity compromises our cloud and gets into the host, it's pretty much game over for the cloud. That's a business destroying event. So the only real threat model from the host to the guest is the cloud service provider. And most of the time, we really would like our customers to trust us that we're not actually trying to hack their virtual machines. So while we think the threat model for driver hardening is useful, it's largely theoretical from the attack vectors we're actually trying to protect our customers. We mostly want to know that A, we can protect external entities from getting into the cloud host, which isn't, the, isn't what this protects against, and uh, sort of B, it's sort of, they would like some assurance that we're not going to attack them, but they mostly take our word for it. You're basically saying you have no need, essentially, of this uh, hardware confidential cloud. I'm not saying no need. What I'm saying is, I think we have a lot bigger fires to fight in confidential computing than hardening the, uh, uh, the device driver there and the guest. Well, like getting attestation to work for starters, getting an attestation that a customer can use easily. I mean, but this is way. But back imagine ahead. you get this right. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we will get this in, in, in one or two years. All this attestation and things will be resolved. So, what is the state after that? So, I'm, I mean, like, can we really claim that this is a secure setup where we really took the, you know, the cloud providers out of TCB, and you don't have to worry about, like, you know, if, if you get like, you know, compromise or something happens to your infrastructure, as you said, so you don't want to get this end goal of, of actually trying to be out of a TCB. Well, it's, I, all security is useful, but the problem with all security is it comes at a cost, both in terms of development and in terms of integration. And the, the 
I'm not actually saying this is bad. I'm just questioning, is the cost benefit worth it for what we're doing in this particular area? Given that, I mean, most of the protection from somebody getting into the host is done at the cloud level, and we're all really, really careful to make sure this doesn't happen. So that, that compromise route is something that we really try and block. Um, but if you could help us with other devices for blocking that route, happy but that's not the device route into into the guest it's something coming out of the guest into our containment environment i that, see the threat model as the fact that the guest doesn't trust their provider yep. the the like the external attacker is the cloud provider itself that's mm -hmm. sort of the whole the whole point of cloud computing well it's it's a selling point that confidential computing tries to do but it's not really a selling point that most cloud service providers use to their end customers and right at the moment what we try and sell to our end customers is simplicity of cloud setup and what we'd like to sell them eventually is verification that when we promised you we did x y and z in confidential computing it actually happened at the time we said it happened but most Cloud, most unsophisticated cloud customers do not want to be involved directly in things like the attestation chain, secrets release, and the like. We have a few sophisticated ones who do, but most don't really care. The threat model where we, the, the unsophisticated customers don't trust the cloud doesn't really exist. So I, yeah, I was going to, assuming we eventually want to uh, do what Elena is proposing here and uh, lock down these drivers, which is where we are converting the private data to shared or other interfaces, other host uh, uh, guest interfaces. Even if in the short term, there's a lot of uh, uh, validity to what uh, James was saying. I think in the long term with the fellow who was right to me, we, we definitely want to get to a model where like we can reduce the trust that the the customer has to have in the uh, the vendor. So going back to a couple comments, uh, going back to your comment about the kernel config, Seems like a question for the distros, uh, but my limited experience is that that seems like a big ask for them to essentially have two images with like one just confident. I, I don't know that. This just seems like a question for the distro, so I just wanted to mention that. The other thing I'm going to comment on that I, I know very little about, but maybe others do. I know uh, in Google Cloud, we have something called Container Optimized OS. I don't know a lot about how it works. I just know from playing with it, it doesn't let me install uh, random kernel modules. I don't know what the prior art there is because in Linux, the driver is essentially a kernel module. So I just wanted to mention that. So just a follow-up comment to that. So uh, I mean, like, distros avoid having multiple kernel config for each and every use case. But what we usually have is we build as much as we can as a module. Um, so, so all you would have to do is to find some way to remove these problematic drivers or have an allow list of drivers that you actually build into the, the image that you want to ship to the customer. That doesn't mean that you build a different kernel, you just restrict the number of modules you actually package so they're available in your confidential VM. Um, may, maybe that already tackles part of the, the issue. But does it actually allow you to really limit for all the drivers? I mean, I, I does mean, it, does you, it work for just... low-level like platform drivers and things like that? Can you really limit it through a config? I mean, whatever you can build as a module, we usually try building as a module so we can... If it builds as a model, but I'm, I'm, my question is, does, is every is all the drivers... I, I, I'm not sure if they're all of them. I mean, you might need some initial thing, but usually we bootstrap from the inner DramaFest, so my best guess is that most of it should be a module. And all you'd have to do is then, like, go over the, the, the image and simply delete the drivers that you don't want, for example. That doesn't tackle the it's, whole 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 picture, but I mean, it's one direction to go, maybe. Yeah. I mean, there is no need to build a new kernel if you can just remove the modules. That's what I'm trying to say. The detail kind of here is that it's not just about removing a couple of drivers we don't want. It's about removing all the drivers apart from, you know, five, six ones we want. So. I think another point is that you still need the vendor to sign the whole package, even all packages with all combinations of certain modules removed. Hi, Dan, Daniel here on the phone. Um, I just wanted to make the point that I don't think we actually need to disable all the drivers at build time. 
all we actually need is the ability to um, attest whether any unexpected hardware has been exposed to the guest. So if, if we can if we can have um, some mechanism to um, have measurements of all of the device models that are exposed to the OS, then um, the attestation can be used to prove that nothing unexpected was present. That is dynamic. That can change. I mean, so you, can, you can have an ongoing dynamic attestation. So, sorry. So what I'm trying to say is that, that state, I mean, we have PCI hot plug and things like that. So that state of, of what is exposed to the guest is dynamic. So at the moment we are testing that the next second, the situation is different. So I don't understand how that would work. Well, limit, limiting the ability to do to respond to hot plug is, is a simpler task than disabling all drivers and having completely custom kernel builds and images. I, th I think from a, from a distro point of view, I don't, from a distro point of view, I don't think it's it's viable to consider building completely custom kernels, nor even really building completely custom images, which limits the installation of certain modules. I think I think it's far more practical just to just uh, attest to what's present and and maybe have some limited filters to to disable use of hot plug, perhaps. But do people see like let's say okay this might be like alternatives we're talking about but do people have like objections on the device filter approach and actually this runtime filtering of the devices and what kind of the angles we haven't thought about i don't have an objection i i think that i think that allow listing the drivers makes a lot of sense for like the the cloud use case like the Cloud providers have a very limited set of drivers that they're mm -hmm. using, Verdeo, NVMe, et cetera. It's easier for us to focus on those two drivers, mm -hmm. attest that the kernel is only ever going to take input from those drivers than to you know, try to harden everything or, or try to, I agree, the dynamic attestation of what hardware is exposed seems seems difficult. So, so this, yeah. this seems like a, a good approach and, and one that we would like to present to our customers. I wanted to add on the threat model. I mean, I think um, there were some questions. I think if we take this confidential computing to the limit, then you would assume that most VMs are running confidential, which means most secrets are hosted in those customer VMs, which means that, I mean, and the attacks like this have been shown in the past on other confidential computing environments where people will attack those interfaces of existing code inside them to cause it to spill secrets, right? I mean, that that would be sort of the taking to the limit. Um, so I, I think this, this is a good goal to achieve. But in terms of the other question I, or comment I had was in terms of, yes, we can eliminate driver with various mechanisms. Whatever code remains also needs to be hardened, the allowed stuff, right? Yes, of course, um, yeah. And and, and I, I don't have time. I have like links and I'll upload this full slide deck at the end. So we have actually spent a lot of effort in hardening. For us, it's a Virtio. So for TDX case, it's a Virtio driver. So we have developed the fuzzing set of fuzzing tools and, and audit methodology to actually develop a way that anyone can use to harden any of these drivers. Because we understand that, you know, we use one set of drivers, Google use different set of drivers and so on. So yeah, we have a plan for that allow set of drivers as well. So, but right. it's in order to kind of claim that like we are secure, we need to also kind of exclude all the rest because we can't, we can't use that methodology to harden. We can't fuzz all this, you know, how many, drivers we have and the upstream kernel. So it's, it, it simply doesn't scale. So that's true. That's right. Yeah. That's what I was getting to that. There are some other generic hardening tech hardening techniques that might apply to non-confidential and confidential VMs equally. That might be also useful to ensure that those drivers are built with those kinds of configurations. Like for example, as some kind of CFI mechanism being turned on for those drivers that are included right? and doesn't apply to just confidential VMs. It applies to non-confidential also. Yeah, so, so a lot of hardening techniques or most of the hardening, the traditional hardening techniques where they, they stay and they're also like applicable for the confidential VM, but like the things that I'm trying to bring attention here is to the new parts, because these are the new parts we haven't hardened before, so. Makes sense. And I guess I'm out of time, right? So, right, Georg? 
so I'm out of time, right? Or yeah, it's now time for the break. Thanks, Elena, for the presentation and the discussion. Thank you.